Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, June 10th, 2022. We told you so. The 2017 tax reform delivered as promised is the title of an article that appeared in the May 8th, 2022 Wall Street Journal. Written by two distinguished economists, this article explains how they predicted the favorable economic effects of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and how critics attacked them for being overly optimistic. Now here are some points made in that article. In 2017, we predicted that reducing the federal corporate tax rate from 35% to 21% and introducing full expensing of new equipment investment would boost productivity, enhancing business investment by 9%. Though growth in business investment had been slowing in the years leading up to 2017, after tax reform, it surged. By the end of 2019, it was 9.4% above its pre-2017 trend, exactly in line with the prediction of our models. Among S&P 500 companies, total capital expenditures in the two years after tax reform were 20% higher than in the two years prior when capital expenditures were actually declining. We also predicted that by enhancing worker bargaining power and increasing new investment in domestic plant and equipment, the average household would see real income gains of $4,000 over three to five years. In 2018 and 2019, real median household income in the U.S. rose by $5,000, a bigger increase in only two years than in the entire eight years of the preceding recovery combined. In 2019 alone, real median household income rose by $4,400, more than it did in eight years from 2010 through 2017 combined. And in the 2021 fiscal year, not only did federal corporate tax revenues come in at a record high, but corporate tax revenue as a share of the U.S. economy rose to its highest level since 2015. Actual corporate tax revenue in 2021 was $46 billion higher than the Congressional Budget Office's post-reform forecast. But if you want to see a real increase, pass the fair tax now. The economic gains discussed in this article are great, but they're really quite small compared to the economic gains that the fair tax will produce. Under the fair tax, the corporate tax rate will not be 21%, but 0%. Businesses and individuals will not have to worry that every new Congress will change the rules and increase tax rates, as the Biden administration has attempted to do. Wholesale prices for raw materials and manufactured goods drop dramatically, as those prices will no longer contain the embedded tax cost of the federal income payroll tax system. American-made goods can finally compete with foreign goods that come to the world market without any tax costs embedded in their prices. Production will dramatically increase, thus reducing the rate of inflation, which is being driven by too many dollars chasing too few products. Increased production will lead to even higher wages needed to attract and keep employees, as we're seeing now. Imported products will no longer receive a 15% or greater subsidy thanks to the current income payroll tax structure as they compete with U.S. products. And U.S. exports will become much more competitive without the 15-20% increase in prices caused by the income payroll tax system. In conclusion, this all reminds me of my 7-year-old grandson. Now, like everyone else's grandson, he's very smart and, of course, very cute. Now, there are two reasons why this is important. First is that our grandchildren have no problem understanding that any system that prevents Americans from being as prosperous as they can be is just wrong. Does he understand all the economic arguments? Well, no, but he really doesn't need to understand them all. All he needs to understand is that enacting the fair tax and eliminating the income payroll tax system will improve the lives of his family and all of his friends by simply changing the ludicrous way the federal government taxes its citizens. That's easy for him and anyone else who doesn't have a vested interest in the present system to understand. Now, no one can really argue that enacting the fair tax will do more to stimulate U.S. economic growth than any number of reforms to the present income payroll tax system could possibly do. Under the fair tax, U.S. companies will have large financial incentives to purchase U.S. sourced raw materials. They'll have a large financial incentive to purchase equipment made in the United States. 
will have large financial incentives to do their research and development with U.S. companies and institutions, and they will be much more competitive both in the U.S. and abroad. Of course, enacting the fair tax will also eliminate all tax returns, both personal and corporate. It will eliminate federal withholding from our paychecks, eliminate government bureaucrats' ability to dictate to us how much tax we owe, and it will put us back in control of when we pay our taxes and how much we pay. The fair tax eliminates public leaks of our private and personal information by bureaucrats, eliminates the billions of dollars now paid to tax lobbyists, eliminates the billions of dollars now paid to the income payroll tax industry. Now, this is an industry that creates no products, but only helps those who can afford it navigate the insanely complex and totally unnecessary income payroll tax system. And it will also eliminate Congress's ability to hide social programs like the Earned Income Tax Credit or Child Tax Credits in the Income Tax Code. They'll have to pass legislation separately. And finally, the fair tax eliminates the ruling elite's ability to directly control us by threatening us with adverse tax code changes if we dare to oppose them. If we eliminate greed and personal advantage by members of Congress, then there's only one reason that they would oppose enacting the fair tax, and that is that they're not capable of grasping concepts that are simple enough for children to understand. And of course, we all know that that's just not the case. The second reason is actually more important. This is a reminder of the real reason why we're all still working to replace the income payroll tax. It's for all of our children and grandchildren and their children. We want them to have the opportunity to live in a prosperous country where they are limited only by their own ability. And this is why we must continue, not just for us, even though it will help us, but for future generations. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We cannot repair it, but we can replace it with a fair tax. All Americans must join us before it's too late and the wonderful country that we love is further harmed. Join us and take back control of our country, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax system. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So, what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay and will know how much tax we're paying because taxes will no longer be hidden from us. They'll be clearly shown on every retail receipt. If you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 